On the evening of November 1st, 2023, Reuters published an exclusive report outlining the potential merger between two regional amusement park companies, Six Flags and Cedar Fair. This was confirmed on the morning of November 2nd, when both companies announced they had closed an $8 billion deal to combine in a merger of equals. Coaster enthusiasts and news media alike both began speculating about what this could mean for each of the former chain's properties. While many details about the long-term results of this merger are unknown, the information that has been shared paints an optimistic picture and provides major hints towards what will really happen in the future of this company. Before I share my final thoughts, here's a breakdown of what exactly we know. The announcement of the merger came at the same time as the Cedar Fair and Six Flags Q3 earning reports. For the 2023 fiscal year, Cedar Fair has presented the following statistics. Over 15 parks, Cedar Fair has served 26 million visitors, had a revenue of 1.8 billion, and earnings of 527 million, with a free cash flow of 312 million. Six Flags reported the following in the same time frame. Over 27 parks, with 22 million guests served, revenue totaling $1.4 billion, and earnings of $462 million, with free cash flow of $314 million. Cedar Fair and Six Flags, if a combined corporation for this period, would have represented 42 parks, 48 million visitors, $3.4 billion in revenue, $1.2 billion in earnings, and $826 million in free cash flow, once adjusted to account for single company expenses. The reason for the increase in earnings and free cash flow is due to the expected combined company run rate, which would drop with reductions in operating, marketing, and corporate costs. On a per park basis, Cedar Fair maintains an average attendance per park of 1,733,000 guests yearly, 120 million in revenue, 35 million in earnings, and 20 million in free cash flow. Six Flags comes in with far weaker numbers, posing an average attendance per park of only 814,000 guests, 51 million in revenue, 17 million in earnings, and 11 million in free cash flow. The combined company would, in the same time period, have found itself operating with an average of 1,142,000 guests per park annually, 80 million in revenue, 28 million in earnings, and around 19 to 20 million in free cash flow. The financial information regarding both companies' current performance poses an interesting perspective on how each is operated. Cedar Fair finds itself focusing far more on quality of offerings over quantity, while the Six Flags model retains the Premier Parks era mentality of quantity driving the company's earnings. The projected outcome of the combined corporation finds itself far more in line with Cedar Fair's operating thresholds for high revenue and earnings while maintaining the high cash flow per park ratio of Six Flags. Both Six Flags and Cedar Fair are merging as equals to become a single C corporation. Trading on the New York Stock Exchange with the ticker symbol FUN, the symbol previously used by Cedar Fair, and adopting the new name of Six Flags. So no, Six Flags is not buying out Cedar Fair, despite what the new company name may suggest. It's important to note that according to the Cedar Fair investor presentation, the goals of this merger are to do as follows. 1. Diversify the park portfolio to mitigate weather-related and season earnings volatility. 2. Accelerate growth driven by an enhanced value proposition for guests and season pass holders. And 3. Provide a strong combined balance sheet with a cash flow profile allowing for increased investments in guest experience and amusement parks. In addition to these three points, the financial information and leadership distribution shed more light on the trajectory intended by this merger. When Cedar Fair and Six Flags merge pending Six Flags stockholder and regulatory approval, Unit holders of the two former companies will have their stocks translated into equivalents for the new company. Stockholders in FUN will receive new units at a 1 to 1 ratio, while six stockholders will receive a reduced ratio of 0.58% new FUN units for each of the former six stock that they owned. Additionally, at deal close, Cedar Fair unit holders will own 51.2% of the new company and Six Flags shareholders will gain the remaining 48.8%. The new leadership team will consist of the following returning executives. Cedar Fair's Richard Zimmerman will retain the title of President and CEO, while Six Flags' Salim Basul will become the Executive Chairman. Brian Witherow of Cedar Fair will take the Chief Financial Officer position, and the Chief Integration Officer will be Six Flags' own Gary Mick. So what does this all mean? Cedar Fair has entered this arrangement with an undeniable advantage. 
Cedar Fair has retained majority control of the company through its unit holders, the CEO and CFO positions, and through their significantly higher revenue and earnings per park. Six Flags enters this arrangement without gaining shareholder control. Salim Basul is no longer the CEO and has been moved to a board position, and it is proven that Six Flags is struggling to get guests into their parks, manifesting in less than half per park annual attendance of Cedar Fair's parks. With Six Flags showing a decrease in earnings and income per share in the most recent quarter, as well as a drop in per cap expenditures, it can be argued that Salim Basul's strategy of pushing Six Flags towards the perception of being a premium product has fallen short of investor and guest expectations. Cedar Fair, while seeing the effects of a potential economic downturn, has not seen these massive drops. Six Flags in-park per capita spending in the third quarter of 2023 was down to an astonishingly low $25.51, as opposed to Cedar Fair's $61.65. It also does not take a significant amount of time or effort to notice the struggling capital expenditures within the Six Flags chain, with major attractions left closed for months at a time with little to no updates on when they'll return to operation, as well as the notable lack of additions outside of special projects like Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger at Fiesta Texas. Cedar Fair also has not had a perfect recovery from the tourism downturn in 2020, with only four roller coasters and a very small handful of major unique attractions coming to fruition at their parks between 2021 and 2023. Most notably, Cedar Fair made a recent attempt to break into the year-round operating market by expanding operations at two of their parks, Kings Dominion and Carowinds. Whether it be staffing difficulties, maintenance schedule restrictions on major rides, or simple lack of public interest, these initiatives did not pan out, and Cedar Fair announced recently that these year-round operations would be ended after only one season. Despite these struggles, Cedar Fair still finds itself in a far more favorable position than Six Flags, with strong per-park attendance, relatively high per capita in-park expenditures, and far more free cash flow to turn back into additions and expansions. Completing this merger satisfies the areas that both Six Flags and Cedar Fair have currently been struggling with. Six Flags will finally have access to a leadership team that has developed and maintained premium regional offerings, attractive events, and have access to the pricing strategies and free cash flow to develop their parks to the premium level that Basul promised years ago. Cedar Fair will finally have the physical properties to support their endeavors towards a more consistent revenue stream, bringing year-round operations to at least four traditional amusement parks. And to wrap things up with my final thoughts, I think this merger will be a big boost to the currently existing Six Flags parks, as well as Cedar Fair's current portfolio of attractions. The long-neglected Six Flags branded parks will finally have the experienced leadership, management, and financial infrastructure to shift towards the higher quality park experience they desire and deserve to give. And Cedar Fair will have the physical properties to expand into year-round operations, as well as the brand recognition of the Six Flags name and the volume of parks to maintain a strong revenue stream to support future capital expenditures at all of their parks, all while cutting down significantly on corporate costs. It's easy to feel anxiety over what the Six Flags name has meant for amusement park quality over the past two decades, and apprehension about a deal of this caliber is to be expected. There is truly no way of knowing what will come next for individual parks, especially those which potentially compete with one another. It can be expected that over the next 5 to 10 years, your local park may undergo a drastic transformation with a new direction, new management, new technology, and new rides. But based on Cedar Fair's majority share of the new Six Flags, dominance over the current executive team, and massive financial advantage per park over the old Six Flags, the deal announced on November 2nd is far less in line with a merger of equals and closer to a graceful end of the Six Flags we have known for the last few decades. With Cedar Fair's management experience and financial strength paving the way into the future for the new collective that will really only be Six Flags in name. And no, Millennium Force is not going to become Goliath or Superman.